Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about jumping in a platformer game. This is just a really simple way to code a jump player jumping for your platformer. So we have our basic code here, init, update, and draw. We have these split out into a couple of pages here. We have a page with our player that just sets up our player properties. And we have a page with our collisions, which I went over in another tutorial. This just basically checks if the player is over something they shouldn't be over and then moves them back to a place where they should be. But let's talk about jumping. Basically what we're doing is we're gonna say if button P, whatever button you want to use for jump, I used X, then you do your jump. So what is this? Well, first we need to test if we're on the ground, if we can actually jump. So I have a function here, and what this is doing is it's testing if the player's on the ground, and we're passing our player into this function. You can also just do this you know, without a separate function, but it's, it's just a little easier to do it this way. And we're testing a point right below our player. So we're basically sampling a point down below his feet, and we're looking on the map and seeing where his feet are. And if they're right over one of these tiles that has a certain flag, we have a flag zero on this ground tile. We're asking if he's on top of a ground tile, then we're gonna do something. We do that by saying fget, which gets the flag for a certain coordinate on our map. The way that we get the coordinate is with mget. So that is by taking our player's x value and adding four and then dividing all that by eight, that will give us the x value. And then our player's y value plus nine. So this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's basically testing if right here is over this land tile. It's looking for flag zero, which again is set in our land tiles. So our local variable A is going to be true if our player is on top of the land like this, okay? So that means he's on the ground. If A is true, we're going to return on ground as true. And if it's false, we're going to return on ground as false. In fact, we could probably just say return A here and just skip a lot of code just like that. Let's see if that still works, yep. So we're testing if he's on the ground. So if he's on the ground, then we're going to set a variable called J force, which is just jump force. Okay, we're gonna set that to 20 and we're gonna play a sound effect for the jump. Now, what happens with this J force? Well, gravity is being applied to our character every frame as long as they're not on the ground. So we can use this same not on the ground function just to add gravity to them. Okay, so every frame he drops down two pixels. J force, we're going to use kind of to counteract that. So we're gonna take the Y coordinate of our player and we're going to take away whatever J force is. So we're taking away 20. So like this, if I hit X, it boosts him up 20. And of course the gravity is also kind of counteracting that. So it's more like starts with 18 and that kind of thing. But if we didn't have this part, let's just take it out for a second. And I hit X to jump. He just flies into space because what we're doing is setting J force to 20 and our gravity is at two. And so every frame he's going to be pushed up 18. So we don't want him to be pushed up 18 and just fly into space forever. So what we do is we take J force and as long as it's over zero, then we're going to just make it get smaller. And so every frame J force equals J force times 0.6. So it'll be just a little bit more than half it was the last frame. And eventually it's going to be so minuscule, it's not gonna matter anymore, right? As soon as it gets under whatever our gravity is, he's going to fall. So we're just taking away that J force every frame. And then if we're on the ground, we can reset J force to something that actually pushes him up. So now he's on the ground. And if I hit X, it sets J force to 20. And then it immediately takes that J force down and he stops being pushed up and he falls down. And it gives you a pretty natural looking jump. So that's a nice way to do it. Of course, there's a lot more advanced things you could do with jumping. You can have him jump higher if you hold X. You can have him fall slower, all kinds of things. If you wanna learn more about that, let me know in the comments, that'd be sweet. But that's a good basic jump. Hope you enjoyed this. If you watched all the way to here, why don't you leave me a like? Cause that would really help. Hey, thanks for watching.